Are you working from home now? It can be a little difficult to concentrate, can't it? Well, I'm Joe Peacock, and I've got some apps that might be able to help you out with that. There are lots of apps out there, and I'm going to be honest that right now, I mean, you know, we're in the middle of this pandemic, and there are probably more and more apps being developed every single day. So how do you pick a good app that's going to help you with your productivity? Well, I've got a few that I actually quite like that I want to tell you about. But if you're selecting your own, the first thing that I want to tell you is look for the features. Are they free? Uh, are they free or are they for a fee? Some are paid. And you might not necessarily get everything that you want with a paid app, but in fact, some free apps actually give you more. Some of them come with things like a website blocker. What's a website blocker? Well, it allows you to concentrate on a specific task. So if you set a time frame for a specific task, let's just say that I'm working on some development, I'm going to write some code and I want to spend an hour doing it, it will actually block your websites for that entire hour and, and stop you from getting onto social media or getting onto the news and checking out what's going on right now. And I know that it's really tempting to do that right now. Some of them will offer distraction-free zones that will actually allow you only to use that particular app and will close down all of your other apps. There's some with session timers, you've got focus music as well, some that will actually silence your phone and provide you with focus music, not music that you're going to sing along to, although that's what I do, right? But something that will help you focus whilst you're actually concentrating on that particular task. There's also uh, apps that will allow you to manage your work with a team so allow you to have file sharing share apps and obviously to do basic project management such as work on user stories and work on project cards that you can share with your colleagues but then there's my favorite and these are the apps that will actually well gamify your concentration and these are the ones that I find to be honest keep me most productive so the first one that I want to look at there in fact there's two there are forest and habitica now forest will actually encourage you to concentrate by building a forest every time you achieve something every time you tick something off your to-do list it will actually grow a small tree and you feed that tree with everything that you achieve, each one of your achievements, until eventually you get a great big forest, hopefully with all of the tasks that you've successfully achieved. And you've also got Habitica as well. Now, Habitica is not growing a forest, but what that's going to do is it's going to give you awards for every single task that you have completed. So you can get up to sort of, you know, silver, bronze, bronze silver, gold levels and, and get various rewards, which you can share. Now, I know that we all like to use social media, so you could share those awards on social media just to demonstrate your productivity, but also to give you a huge, big sense of achievement. Getting away from gamification, I've got some apps that I really like. There's Serene. Now, Serene is a really good app. It, it works on Mac OS as well as on Windows. It has an activity planner. It has your um, timer. It has focus music, and it also has a distraction blocker on there as well. So that one's a really, really good app it won't gamify anything as I say you won't be growing a forest however it will allow you to concentrate you've also got focus booster as well which again is another personal app and focus booster allows you to set time limits for your apps it alerts you when or for your tasks it alerts you when those tasks are up when you should have finished those tasks and it sets a do not disturb on your laptop or on your phone so you don't get any phone calls during that time you're not going to be distracted by any emails or anything else that comes in I don't know about you but I find myself very easily distracted by that notification that bing that says there's a new email coming and I want to go and read it straight away so those particular apps will set a distraction blocker that will stop that from happening of course, you do if you have both Microsoft and you have um, a Mac, you can set a do not disturb on your laptop. But, you know, that's sometimes very easy to forget, isn't it?
Then we've got Habit Hub. Habit Hub allows you to set goals for your day or goals per hour and tracks achievement of those goals. And you've also got some rescue time in there as well, which is a do not disturb, a web blocker, which allows you to concentrate for that specific amount of time. The downside to Habit Hub is that Apple seem to have removed it from the App Store at the moment. So I'm not too sure um, what's happening there, but it is certainly available on Windows and I believe on Android as well. And we've got Loop. Loop is a habit tracker. So what Loop will do is allow you to enter in a to-do list and then it will track what you're doing at certain times of the day. Now that's useful because it tracks when you're most productive, when you achieve the most throughout the day. I know when I achieve the most throughout the day, generally between eight and 10 in the morning, that's when I'm at my most focused, that's when I'm at my most productive ask me to do anything between sort of, you know, 1600 and 1700 or 4 and 5 p.m. in an afternoon. And, and yeah, that's not going to happen because right? that's when I'm at my most distracted. I know that. And Loop, along with all of the other apps, actually does provide some very, very good analytics to allow you to go back and see how you've performed. Then we've got Toggle and Toggle allows you to categorize your to do list and set alarms. It's available as a desktop app, but it's very basic. It's a do not dis it has a do not disturb on there. But again, as I say, it's a very, very basic. It doesn't allow you to recognize your achievements. The analytics are not so great with that. But as I say, it's really, really basic. And then we move on to, from the personal apps, we move on to the team apps that there are available. And as I say, these are just my personal favorites. There are hundreds of other apps out there. There's Doodle. And Doodle allows you to have a calendar view and allows you to have a scheduler, which is a group scheduler with your colleagues and with your team. Um, and you can actually use, and this is a feature that I really like about Doodle, you can use polls to find the best time for a meeting. So if you're trying to schedule a meeting with somebody, you can say, okay, should we have it at nine, at 10, 11, or at 12? And then send out a poll to all of the invitees and they can come back with what they think is the best time. I really like that. That feature. The problem is that if you give somebody four different options and you've got four people, they're probably all going to pick a different one. So use it wisely. Then you've got Notion. Notion's really useful because it gives you a shared Kanban board. Now a Kanban board is a very simple to-do list that shows progress. So you can see what tasks are still to do, uh, what tasks are in progress and what tasks have been completed. And it allows you to share tasks with your colleagues. It is a very simple project management tool, but it does give you analytics, which is really useful. Then we've got Trello. Trello, again, allows you to have that Kanban board that you can share with your team. Trello also allows attachments and file sharing, not just sharing of those project cards or sharing of those tasks. And that can be really, really useful. But let's face it, we've all got apps like Slack and Zoom and Teams that will allow you to share files anyway. So whether you need that feature or not, well, that's up to you, really. It's a debatable point. Point, I guess. And then we've got Notion as well. Now Notion again has a Kanban board and it allows you to share tasks and it provides you with analytics. And I'm going to be honest, there's not much in between Notion and Trello for me in terms of usage, um, in terms of sort of, you know, the, the sort of easy to use there. We do have, these are my favorites. There are lots of others out there. You know, there's Microsoft to have a to-do list, but it is a very basic to-do list. We've also got Remember the Milk. We've got Tick Tick as well. Really basic to-do list. Some of them allow you to share your to-do list, but for the most part, that's all they're going to do. They're not going to help you focus. And what I really wanted to talk to you about was my productivity favorite apps that will help you focus. The ones that will set that do not disturb and will actually block your access to websites and stop you peeking at that email because I know that I want to do it. I'm so tempted. I mean, we've got We Do, we've got Habit Share, we've got Wanderlist. There are lots of different apps out there, as I said. Find one that's right for you. First thing though that you want to do is just document your requirements and then go out and find an app that meets your requirements. There are lots out there. These were just my personal favorites, but certainly check them out. See what you think. Check out the playlist for more working from home tips and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. 
I'm Joe Peacock and thanks for watching.